Yeah. It's our holiday plumbing radio ad. You gotta listen to this. Hear that? What's going on? Well, my cousin Carl is coming over again for the holidays, and he's a real party pooper, if you know what I mean. I need somebody on standby. <laughs> Absolutely. We've seen it all over the last 67 years and can solve any plumbing problem. We promise to be prompt, professional, and pleasant. Wow, I'm so glad I called. Yeah, call us anytime. Kobe Brothers at 916-975-9898. That's 916-975-9898. Hearing your own ad on the radio is freaking awesome. Radio advertising works. That's why we've done it, and that's why we'll continue to do it. All right. So by the end of this video, I want you to understand the pros and the cons of using radio advertising to grow your business, whether it's a graphic design business, web design business, motion design business. But let's head back to the office and I'll tell you more about it. <laughs> All right, radio advertising. I've had a lot of experience in radio advertising. I've had multiple ads, hundreds of probably ads in total now run on the radio. And it's something that I'm super passionate about. something I'm really excited to share with you. But before I get into the good stuff, I want to talk a little bit about the bad stuff because there are some cons to radio. The industry is changing. The industry has been really shrinking for a long time. And it's really important that you understand the good, the bad, and the ugly of radio. So let's go ahead and jump into the cons. The first con of radio is that it can be pretty expensive. Now, the range varies just depending on the type of station that you're listening to and the reach of that station. But the cons is it can be really, really expensive. Depending on if you're running nationally or if you're running locally, that cost can vary significantly. It's also a lot less targeted than online marketing. You can target so many different details about a person. They call those data points with online marketing, which is why it's exploded in growth the way it has and why Facebook's had to take away a lot of the targeting options because it really got into people's personal lives and privacy. And so now you have something like radio, which is less targeted. You can target by the type of station. So some stations cater to more conservative people versus more liberal people like NPR versus Fox, right? So there's really a big difference business stations versus Christian stations. There's some targeting that's available, women versus men, but the detailed targeting of how many kids they have in the household, things like that is a lot more limited. So those are some of the cons. Um, one of the other cons is if you're really on a low budget, then you're only going to be able to advertise locally. And some of those smaller local stations don't even get ratings. So you don't really get stats of how many people are hearing your ads. And some of the information is just kind of a guess. So not having that local targeting, not knowing how big your audience is and not having some of these stations be rated, uh, the Nielsen rating as it's called, can really impact and affect your business. So I'm just curious, have you ever been on a radio show? Have you ever had a radio ad? Or have you ever had your own radio show? I'd love to hear about it. If you have, if you have experience with radio, definitely drop a comment down below. And if you'd like to be on a radio show, also drop a comment and say, I would love to be on radio. I drop that comment down below because I always have opportunities coming up for you to get spots if you're interested in talking about your business or what it is you're doing. And if you want to be on my show. So drop a comment down below and let me know. All right, so now to the important stuff, the, the meat and the potatoes of what you came here for is understanding the three different types of airtime that you can buy on the radio. The first type of airtime that you can buy are commercials. Most commercials do not go more than 60 seconds, but sometimes radio stations will do promos and they'll sell 15 second and 30 second spots. The 15 second spots we're gonna talk about in a minute, but I wanna to stick to the 30 second and 60 second spots for now. These are the go-to lengths for radio ads. I've done both. Uh, I've done more of the 60 second than the 30 second, but you really get a lot of bang for your buck when you do the 60 seconds because you can fit a lot of content into one minute. And if you tell a story and you actually have the right marketing strategy behind these tactics, which these are, you will have a lot of success mm -hmm. on the radio. Now, the second type of airtime that you can buy are sponsor spots. So you may hear them doing the weather or the traffic. And when they do those, they said, this segment is brought to you by a AIS insurance, right? So these certain segments and these sponsor spots can be done for certain sections like traffic, weather, news, radio, whatever the different spots of these radio campaigns that they're doing throughout the day and sections of the radio station, they actually have radio sponsor spots. So this is a really good deal. It's usually cheaper and during the holidays and then major pushes, if you listen, you can actually get a really good deal on these sponsor spots and you can tag in some actual radio spots with it. And this is a really good type of airtime as well. Gives you a lot of branding, a lot of credibility. The third one, and this is where I have the most amount of experience because I did it the longest, 
is actually creating shows or like new shows. And this is what they call block programming. This is where you buy a block of time on the radio station. Usually it's in their lower non-peak times of the station where you buy this block programming time of an hour. It technically breaks down to about 50 minutes and they'll quote you anywhere between a thousand to sometimes $5,000 a month, depending on the size of the station to have that hour block. And during that time, it's not like you can put anything you want, but you can basically create a show or some sort of content around whatever topic you want to talk about. And you buy that time. You can bring on guests and do interviews. You can do just talk. You can do sermons. You can do um, all kinds of different things with shows. You can talk about news and current events and make that block programming, whatever you want. You can talk about technology. I just happened to take mine because I was on a Christian business station is it did a mentorship, Christian mentorship show where I talked about sales, marketing, leadership, and technology. Those are some big areas that I have a passion for. So I broke my show into four segments and I talked about each of those during my show. I did some awesome interviews. I met some great people and I actually built myself as an authority versus pitching somebody to be on my podcast. I said, Hey, you want to come on my radio show? It was an FM radio show and that positioned me a little bit differently than everybody else. So that's the last one. And that's a big one. If you've never done that before, I'd highly look at it and highly consider it because it's a really good authority building tool. So if you found this content helpful so far, please do me a huge favor, hit the like button right down below, introduce yourself. I want to know who you are, what you do, why, what brought you to the channel, why you got here. And let's go ahead and roll into the next section, which is important because I want to validate everything I just said with some industry data. Industry data is really helpful. It brings some facts to the table. I'm not just sharing fluff and my own experiences, but I'm sharing data that has been collected over the last decade. So as far as industry data goes, I want to read this to you guys. All right. So data evaluating the radio market in the United States shows that in 2020 radio advertising spend in the country, and this is in USA amounted to 10 point one billion us dollars yes that's 10 billion with a b it is forecasted that spending on radio ads is going to grow to 11.7 billion by the end of 2024 we're almost there 11.7 billion dollars that's a ridiculous amount of money the second stat that i found that i wanted to share with you guys is the weekly time spent with online radio and online and offline like actual fm and am stations uh and audio sources in the united states increased so it's actually increasing to 974 minutes in 2021 with the amount of time being spent per week amounting to 16 hours and 14 minutes per week this increase might have been caused by the rise of time spent at home due to the pandemic so a lot of people have access to streaming radio stations now like iHeartRadio. radio the last stat that i wanted to give you here that's really important is in march of 2021 so this year so this is a pretty new stat the leading online radio company in the United States based on the average number of active sessions was iHeartRadio with around 308,000 average active sessions that month. So in March alone, there was 308,000 sessions that happened on iHeartRadio alone. That's a large audience. iHeartRadio is a great platform. I've been on it myself. I have my podcast on that platform. I can speak very highly of it. iHeart has done a really great job. And it's a great platform. So the next piece and something that I really needed to share with you, and I talked a little bit about this before, but I want to circle back to it, is your target audiences. It's important that you target an audience with the station you're going on. If you're going after more liberal people who are Prius driving, eco-friendly uh, Democrats, then you're probably going to want to go towards more of an NPR, more of a liberal station. If you're trying to go for more of a conservative audience, the Larry Elder, who's a nationally syndicated radio host and also just tried to run for the recall election here in California against Governor Gavin Newsom. He is on the more conservative side, has a conservative radio show. If you're targeting moms, you probably want to go after radio stations like The Fish. If you're targeting dads, you're going to want to go after ESPN radio. There's lots of different targeting based on the different types of stations that you pick. So you want to go after the right audience and have the right message for the right people and also the right time because the time of day that you play your radio ads is also very important. The evening drive, the morning radio, those are important things to consider as well when you're targeting your audiences. Are you, what, what time of day am I going to be featured on? So I want to circle back lastly to the cost. I did touch on it just a little bit, but I want to make sure that you guys are super crystal clear about what radio costs. So between the commercials, 30 and 60 second spots, you could be looking at the low side. I mean, the absolute lowest I've ever seen on like a holiday giveaway was about 25 bucks a spot. Like I said, you're going to need to buy at least 50, 60 spots uh, and can go as high as like 60, $75. I've even seen like $90 spots for prime time airtime. So you got to take that into consideration. It can get pretty expensive if you're nationally being played. 
that's going to be really, really expensive for spots. So something to take into consideration. A lot of the big boys have a hold on the marketplace and it's really hard to break in. So starting locally on a small station and building some momentum is a really good way to start. Now, in terms of sponsor spots, I talked about this. You're going to be looking at a cost of about a thousand to five thousand dollars a month. That's a monthly fee to have your own radio station and radio show on a radio station. Sponsor spots. These are usually more done in endorsements. These endorsements can cost you anywhere between a thousand and five thousand dollars because they typically have some sort of MC or jock that's behind your name. So, like my friend Big Al did a lot of AIS commercials back in the day. Um, a lot of Geico commercials, like these jocks will rep your brand for you and say, Hey, I, I just had my solar installed by this company, or I'm producing this segment, you know, in part by Wells Fargo or safe credit union. Right? So these sponsor spots will help you promote your brand without having to have a big radio ad campaign and they'll still cost you money, but you can pair these together with some other radio campaigns and actually save some money by doing kind of a combo package deal. So this can apply to your business in a really profound way of, not a lot of your competition is going on to these older, more traditional ways. Radio has been around for forever. I think it was invented in like 1867 or something like that. So it's not new, it's been around a long time. And a lot of people have moved over to, to digital streaming platforms like podcasting, but there's still a great opportunity on radio for you. And that's why I wanted to share that with you guys today. So if you guys haven't heard already, I wanted to make sure you guys knew about the Instagraphics Pro Network. If you're a creative, if you're a designer, web design, motion design, graphic design, I have a community that's growing that's thriving and we're doing events and all kinds of fun stuff together. And I'd love to have you there. If you'd be interested in that, all you got to do is go to Facebook and type in Instagraphics Pro Network, or there's a link down in the description that you can hit and make sure that you check out the group, answer all the questions. We will not let you in if you don't answer all the questions, but I would love to invite you to be a part of that community with us and just have you there. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys took a lot of notes. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'm Adrian Boysell and keep looking up.